Now, the first example that I'm going to go through uh, to introduce improper integrals, um, some of you may think, why is Jack doing that? Because that seems blatantly obvious what the answer is going to be at the outset. Uh, I'm going to be integrating x squared. Uh, with respect to x between 1 and infinity. Now, the reason why this should be uh, relatively obvious as to what the answer is going to be, because we should know what x squared looks like. OK, looks like that. And between 1 and infinity, I'm looking at this region here, which is clearly going to be undefined or divergent, OK? So, you know, there's no cap on that area. Uh, that's definitely going to diverge away to infinity. So it seems like a relatively strange choice uh, to start this off. The reason why I've picked this one uh, is because we don't have to worry about the algebra uh, with integrating x squared. We know that that integrates very easily to one third x cubed. What I'm trying to do here is to show you the process, uh, the structural algebraic process that we go through to explain our answer. Okay, that's what I want to focus on first. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to think about that there is a problem that if I continue with this uh, just using first year integration techniques, then I'm going to end up using infinity like a number. I'm going to substitute infinity in as if it was a value that you could substitute in, which it's not. We can't do that. So I need to set up some structure to allow myself to work with infinity, and that is using a limit. So I'm going to write the limit, and I'm going to introduce uh, the letter a, and I'm going to say a is going to tend to infinity, and we're going to look at the integral between 1 and a of x squared. Now, the reason why we would do this is, effectively, I'm saying, right, I'm going now between 1 and a, and what I'll do is I'll let a get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and see what happens, see what actually happens to the area in question. That's the idea here. So this allows me to circumvent substituting infinity in as a number, which, I, as remember, I can't do that. But I can substitute a in. So the limit as a tends to infinity needs to be there on the outside of my integral. And now when I evaluate it, I'm going to get the 1 third x cubed evaluated between 1 and a. So we've got the limit as a tends to infinity. Substitute the a in, we get 1 third a cubed. Substitute the 1 in, we're going to subtract 1 third. So we're looking at the limit as a tends to infinity of 1 third a cubed take away 1 third. But we should recognise that as a tends to infinity, 1 third a cubed take away 1 third tends to infinity, OK? If a is tending to infinity, then a cubed certainly is. So, uh, the integral between 1 and infinity of x squared is divergent. Or is undefined. Okay, as we knew that it would be. But this is really, as I said, to show you the structure of how to answer the question. Okay, the process that we need to go through. Really, this process here isn't very taxing, but you can see that actually it is, um, it's got to be clearly set up. It's got to be showing precisely what it needs to, to go through this process. 
So this is how we can show it for this simple example. And we're going to go through some more examples in the coming videos so you can see how this process develops to not just this type, but also when we are integrating um, over a value that will make the function undefined.